it, it is kind of crazy that, that you, you came up to us because I'm highly known around here. A lot of people really um, oh, yeah. answer to me hmm. around here. And when they have issues, they come up to me to try to get them solved. And it becomes <clears> kind of a hassle at times because I don't have time for the most important, which is sitting right here in the front seat. Is he talking about me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's talking about me. My mom likes to say that I was a natural born leader. Um, I just I just say that it's just part of growth and development. It's part of being a, um, part of a, a group and seeing the strengths and weaknesses in that group, I've I'm able to exploit them. I'm able to. It's that's that's that stuff right over there. The, the tarps and that. all that. Yeah. That's our little camp. How many people live over there? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh. They're all couples, but yeah, the thing, the difference couples. between the couples is the ones next to us. They fight constantly. The other ones, they fight. So and so, they call each other horrible names, and me and him just sit in our home and we're like, oh my gosh, like it's really uncomfortable because well, I mean, we argue, we yeah, like, couples argue, but you don't have to beat the crap out of each other to and you don't have to let figure, the whole world know that figure you're stuff out. <laughs> yeah, hmm. everybody doesn't need to know your business. So you sleep here, but then you um, go to the shelter for meals and stuff. Well, we, if we get over there during meal times, we do. Um, a lot of times you come right here, because this is the mission right here. This is another uh, shelter, so to say. Okay. Um, but it's, it's just, it's a, it's a men's facility, basically. Um, we, we go down there to the shelter to, to sell whatever it is we, we come across. Like, we'll come across certain items, like, he, like little portable heaters and stuff like that, that we can go down there and you can sell. People uh -huh. actually buy the stuff and then that's how we get the money to do what we do. Gotcha. Interesting. So, sounds like you're pretty resourceful. Yeah. You gotta be, right? Yep. That, uh, that big, the big blue area right there, that's, that's the first couple of our group. And then these four, these four spots right here. Ours is the one with the blue tarp all nice and square. <laughs> I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a, what's it called, babe? Uh, uh OCD. He's, yeah, he's very OCD and very, he's very resourceful. I think if I didn't have him with me, I probably wouldn't survive the winters because I don't like hanging tarps and stuff like that. I would just put it up and obviously the snow and everything would cave it in. <laughs> yeah, it's that, this, this last snowstorm we had, it actually survived pretty good. Hmm. Um, how long have you been in that spot or have you moved around? We, the only time we leave this area is when we go to the hotels. Or we, we're staying at her sister's house. She's, she's got a sister that lives right over here that lets us come in. But her sister recently had some issues that that are more important than us staying there. Us staying there can kind of put them at risk, so we choose not to stay there. Uh -huh. And so we come down here, and this is our main area. This is little, this spot right here because the officers don't really mess with this so to say as much as they would mess with others just because we just respect I mean any, anywhere Keep, you it's about keeping your area clean too and yeah. like most people look at think about homeless people as dirty gross people well some of them are but we're not like we're not that type of we're very clean we try to keep our area clean and make sure that our neighbors are keeping their areas clean too because the less garbage and destruction there is, the less the cops mess with us. Right. Do you worry about your stuff over there unprotected during the day? No. I don't because I have him with me. However, like I said, if I didn't have him with me, I I wouldn't I definitely wouldn't be sleeping outside. I'd be probably in the women's side or you know, I I wouldn't sleep out here by myself, that's for sure. Well, and people are kind of afraid of me. I don't know why. He looks like a gentle giant, actually. He is. He seems sweeter than you might think for a big, tall dude who was an athlete. I, I attribute that to my mom. I was raised just by my mother. And she, uh, yeah, she, she taught me very well, matter of fact. Yeah, she raised him very, very well. How many times have you been in jail? Oh, uh, yeah. 
A couple? Uh, a few. A few. Yeah. You're not going today, are you? No. Okay. Actually, I just went to court yesterday. <laughs> that makes me feel better. Yeah, no, I just went, went to court, court yesterday, yesterday and uh, I got another court date in two weeks. I do have to go check in with uh, pretrial services because I got to release the pretrial. Mm. I don't know how that's going to work because they want me to, I got to call in every day and they want me to do piss tests, random UAs, and me and random UAs do not get along. Mm. Because, you know, I got my extracurricular activities that I like to yeah. involve myself in. and. I want to let you know you should feel very special because my wife has actually put off our extracurricular activities to give you uh, your little uh, time slot. Oh, is that is that where you were heading? Yes, sir. Both of you? Yeah. yeah. So is that a is that a way to survive? It actually, it is because what it does is it it not necessarily numbs us, but it makes certain things culpable. You know, like we can deal with certain individuals like I mean we get it from both sides one side of us is screaming and yelling when they stop the other side starts mm. and it just makes it it just kind of takes us to our own little world I mean chances are I may have to go into into a detox program up at LDS hospital today or tomorrow oh if really that's, if that's what when I go check in if that's what they want me to do I have to because if and I'm going with you I piss dirty then what happens is they revoke my pretrial release, I go to jail, oh. and she's out here by herself. Can't do that, right? And I gotta put somebody else before I put me. Hmm. Yeah. Sounds like he really loves you. Hmm. <laughs> Everybody deserves to be loved, don't they? Yeah. I love her more than I love myself. That's pretty, that sounds like a greeting card. That'd be a good greeting card. You got a right greeting card. <laughs> I think I should be a comedian. And you could probably do that too. So, help me under, give me a, if you had to estimate how many people uh, on the streets are using something. 95%. Take, does that count alcohol? Uh, I would actually, I would go, but I would, I would say that there's probably not a homeless person in the state of Utah that doesn't use some type of substance. Some substance, okay. But not necessarily illegal. Um, yeah, not necessarily. But chances are they do. It's either spice, um, heroin, crystal meth. Uh, spice and heroin are pretty much the epidemic. Um, well, spice. Spice is actually bigger. See, spice yeah. is a bigger epidemic than heroin. We get more. We get more uh, 911 calls and 911 uh, responses for spice than you do heroin. Wow. And it'd be kind of crazy. You would not, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you'd be surprised at how many, at the the type of person is actually homeless here in the state of Utah. You, you could be, like you said, driving down the street and see somebody walking down the street thinking that, oh, that's, you know, that's a, he's probably got a nice little spot and he actually probably doesn't. He probably sleeps in a spot worse than what we sleep in. Do you ever feel, so you're together, which must make it so much easier to be homeless, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously. Are there well, times when you still feel alone? At, at times, at, at, actually, us being together sometimes makes it harder because I, I don't, it's not, no place for her. She doesn't need to be out here. She needs to be in a house. She needs to have kids running around the house, screaming and yelling and driving her mad. You know? How's that sound? Mm. <laughs> you want to be where he is? Yeah. Wherever that might be. Just because I don't like him being out here alone either. I don't feel it's fair for me to be in a warm home while he's out here freezing and doing what he's got to do for us to survive. <clears throat> so, so tell me about the day you met. Where were you? Were you on Down the street? Down at the shelter. Down at the shelter? I was uh, leaning up against the back of my mom's Durango. Well, not the, the day we met was a little bit later on, but the first time I seen her, I was leaning up against the back of my mom's Durango, and she came pushing the boy out to go meet up with her friend. And for like about a week, I posted up there every day just to watch, just to see, to see her come out. Cause she, it was like clockwork. Every day she'd come out at the same time. And then one day I'm sitting on the block next to my brother. Um, and she came up and was talking to my brother about a little problem that she had. My brother deferred to me cause he was trying to put me in a position. It's, it's crazy because it's down there. It's not just like free for all. 
there's an actual functioning faction, faction down there. There's a there's a organization down there, and I was at one time in charge of it all. Oh, wow. And I didn't like it. I didn't. I don't like. I don't like how the people there are selfish. I don't like how the people there only want you around when they when you can help them. So therefore, I turned away from it. But uh, she came up to ask him to help, and he deferred me. And I asked her if she wanted to go get something to eat. And I was I was staying in a hotel room. I brought her and the boy over to the hotel room, and we've been together ever since. So what's the long-term plan? You've been together and on the street for five years? Yeah. So where are you in five years? If I come back through, will I see you walking down by Rio Grande? I hope not. No. It's just it's just hard. It's just real, real hard. I mean, our addiction is what makes it the hardest. I yeah. believe that once we both get over our addiction, then things will just start falling into place for us. But we both have to want to get over our addiction. That's the problem right now. Ours is such a physical thing that it's, people don't understand. They look at heroin addicts as just junkies. And, you know, but they don't know the in-depth of, we want to quit. We don't want to be doing what we're doing. Well, However, it's just such a physical thing that pain and the hurt and everything like just it's like this. the things you got to go through to get clean and get off of what you're doing is hard but you want to quit yeah. yeah i'm gonna give you an example if you were to go down there and just pick up any other heroin addict and go down there and say look if you come with me like you did us and i'll and i'll buy you a balloon they'd get in the car and you'd see them they'd be like this hmm. but you notice know, us okay in the five years we've been together, we our relationships made it through heroin. I've only done a one balloon shot of heroin one time in my life. Other than that, we've made it on, we each do a half a balloon, which is damn good. Because oh. a, a heroin habit progresses. You need more to, to, to survive, but we've managed to just survive off of the little bit that we do. We don't do it to get all nodding out and Every we do it to maintain do. and to not be sick so what what will be what will, what will be the change what will be the thing that that finally sort of triggers in you where you say i want to be clean i want to provide for my i'm having to go to lds and do you think that's what's going to take savage is being locked up well not necessarily not necessarily locked up but the the fear of uh, being locked up and her being out here by herself. You are just the kindest people, and I just cannot imagine how much good you'd be doing in the world if you were clean. Can I just say that? Can I just be that honest? I mean, you look like you could be the mayor of the city. Like you could be. I mean, why not? Why not president? I mean, you just look like you have so much goodness in both of you to to do good in the world. And you know what's crazy? You got to be clean, though, right? Yeah. You know what's crazy is that I've uh, most of the, the, the street knowledge that so say, but most of my knowledge that I have, I've gained in the last five years because I've gotten a chance to really know what it's like. Because, I mean, huh. growing up the way I did, I was spoiled. My mom got me whatever I wanted. She still does. Um, <laughs> Not true. Yeah. yeah. I was mama's just, boy. Yes. Major, major mama's boy. I've just... I know... I've had enough, but I also understand and realize that I can't expect her to be and do the same things that I do. I'm a little bit stronger. I can I can handle like the withdrawals a little bit better. You know, um and that's that's the, that's our major that's our major function, our major issue right now is is the withdrawals. She's afraid to go through the suffering that she's gonna go through. And so uh, we've been talking about going to LDS. We've been talking about going to LDS. But uh 
I can't afford to. I can't afford to go to jail right now. Especially with this cold as it is out here. I mean, I got that camp set up just so if I when when I went to court yesterday, that if I went to jail, she'd have something that she could rely on to keep her dry, to keep her warm. And that's what it's done. So imagine that you're on the street this morning and some nice uh, car pulls up, right? And windows up, maybe you hear the door lock, right? When they make eye contact. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, what do you think is going through that, that guy's mind or that gal's mind? They're disgusted. They don't know us. They see what's on the outside. They see a homeless person. They don't know that the struggles and everything that we go through to survive. So no, a lot of people might think, well, you know, you, you chose this. You know, you're you're homeless because you, they might even be thinking, you know, go get a job, right? You ever heard that? Somebody mm -hmm. else, you go get a job? What do you say to that? I have a job. My job's a lot harder than any job that you'll ever have. You know, my job is survival. You know, and I don't judge, and that's 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 the main problem with society nowadays is judgment. You know, mm -hmm. and and I mean, based on a religion, you know, let the what was what is let ye without sin cast the first stone. Well, guess what? I will never throw a stone in my life. I will never judge anybody, even though you do feel judged. Yeah, every well, day. I, I know I'm judged, and people judge me like. I mean, and it's not bad you judge me when you first, you know, most people judge me when they see me, oh, whoa, he's, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Stay away from him, he looks mean. You, when you said, well, why do they call you savage? I bet you what you were thinking is, huh? Probably you did something bad to somebody. Now, actually, savage was the name that was given to me because of a cup I picked up that had the word savage on it. Oh, really? Yeah. It's kind of funny. I'm probably the most loyal and respectful person that most people will ever meet in their lives. He's loyal to a fault. Sounds like he's been pretty loyal to you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've got... I'm five credits away from the Associates of Applied Science and Architectural Technology. Wow. I've got to get... i got to get uh, through this addiction I'm in right now. That's my main roadblock. Because a lot of places don't want to hire... They'll hire a felon before they'll hire a heroin addict. I wouldn't blame him. I, I wouldn't want a heroin addict working for me just because I'd be afraid that he was going to hurt himself or she was going to hurt herself. Or just wouldn't show up. Well, no, I'd rather not show up than hurt themselves on the job. What's the longest you can go without heroin? <clears throat> I can go for a minute, but, you know. What is I'm that? Brag. A day? Two days? Um, a week? Well, heroin's got what they call a half-life. Depending on the de depending on the quality of the heroin, um, I mean, I think the longest that we've gone is three days before we've had to. I mean, not had to, but like last night was kind of bad because we got some stuff that wasn't really good, and I finally just got up and went and got rid of our little portable heater so I could get as well. But it's no thing because it'll come back. It always does. Um, so you sold your portable heater to. Get cash to get more, is that you're saying? Yeah. <clears throat> hey, don't worry, daddy's home. <laughs>